So you're on that call again where that patient's heart rate is really fast. It's over 150. Here we got a VTAC, wide complex tachycardia at a rate of 184. Now you have chosen that this patient is unstable. How are we going to treat it? By utilizing our monitor. Today we're going over synchronized cardioversion. My name is Mike from Rescue Academy. I'm here at EEI, Emergency Educational Institute in Coral Springs, Florida, and we're gonna be going over exactly how to synchronize cardiovert. Now, like I said, you already determined that this patient is unstable. How did you do so? Okay, there's a couple different methods of which I'm gonna be showing you. First is one that you might be already familiar with. It's called cash. They always said, if you got the cash, you could buy the jewels. Yeah, it's, it's a great joke. Um, okay, so first, C stands for chest pain. Okay, chest pain. A stands for altered mental status. S stands for shortness of breath. And H, which I underlined here, is hypotension. Now understand, just because somebody has cash, your patient now has chest pain, and their heart rate's greater than 150, doesn't mean you're going to synchronize cardiovert them. That is what you need to determine as a paramedic. And I'm gonna give you an example. Not long ago, did I have a patient who was a 17-year-old female, all right? Her heart rate was like 182. She had chest pain. She had shortness of breath. She was crying because her boyfriend broke up with her and her heart rate's over 180. She has got two of the cash. Should I shock her? Of course I should. No, you should not shock her. She did not meet technical unstable criteria. Now, one thing that I want you to pay attention to is hypotension. Treat your patient. If your patient is hypotensive and they're hemodynamically unstable, this is a precursor that your patient is in the unstable realm. Just because they have one of these, these signs or symptoms does not make them unstable. So again, that is something that you're gonna to have to determine. If is my patient stable or unstable? What if they're altered mental status because they did cocaine and their heart rate is elevated over 150, but they're perfusing fine? Are you gonna shock them? No, all right? Treat them for the cocaine. Let's try to drop their rate a different way, okay? Utilize Versed. This is one method, utilizing cash. I'm not gonna tell you, yeah, you gotta have two values for it to make sense. Now, understand that hypotension, a really good way of looking at this is to have one of these symptoms, one or two of these symptoms with hypotension. So this was found directly on American Heart Association's tachycardia algorithm. Basically what it's showing is if your patient shows these signs and symptoms, and their heart rate is greater than 150, they can be considered unstable. And if the patient is unstable, we need to utilize synchronized cardioversion. So now the first one is hypotension, just like in cash. All right, we so it's hypotension or hemodynamic instability. They added acutely altered mental status, which I think is a better terminology, okay? So it's not a patient that is normally uh, altered mental, not dementia, it's not an Alzheimer's patient, all right? So this is something that is abnormal for this patient to be altered. Uh, signs of shock, again, hemodynamic instability, poor perfusion, some signs of shock, cool, pale, diaphoretic. That is going to dictate if your patient is unstable. Now, this one's interesting. You see ischemic chest discomfort. Now, like in CASH, CASH shows shortness of breath and chest pain. Here, there's no shortness of breath, but they said ischemic chest discomfort. Now, ischemia just means lack of oxygen. So lack of oxygen with chest discomfort is considered unstable. And the last one, acute heart failure. All right, acute heart failure, heart's failing. You know, with heart failure, your patient won't be able to have a uh, adequate cardiac output. Uh, might be getting rails, like what you would see in congestive heart failure. And like here, it says if you do have these signs or symptoms that were caused by persistent tachycardia, then you would utilize synchronized cardioversion. And of course, don't forget, consider sedation. 
remember, your pads do come with pictures, which is awesome. Okay, so one shows here on this patient's side. The other one is right up here on the top. Okay. Now with these monitors, they're biphasic machines. All that means is that these pads are talking to each other and that energy is going from one pad to the other. Obviously our location on where we're placing these pads are extremely important. What's here in the middle? The heart. So I don't wanna manipulate these pads any other way because I'm gonna completely miss what I'm trying to do here. Now some special considerations with these pads. If my patient is really hairy, just make sure that you're shaving them. Um, you don't need to do a full trim job. You just gotta do exactly where these pads are gonna be going. If your patient has any medication patches, just make sure you're gonna take them off, go in and wipe that down. If your patient does have a pacemaker, we're gonna place this pad to the side of the pacemaker, okay? Don't place it right on top of the pacemaker. And then obviously if your patient is wet, make sure that these pads have pad to skin contact. Wipe down the patient, doesn't have to be completely dry, but go ahead and wipe them down so where these pads are gonna stick on without any problems. Now when placing pads on a small child, obviously these pads are massive. Look how this would look if I try doing that. If the pads touch, don't use them. If these are the only pads I have, I'm gonna go ahead and place one on the front of the child and one on the back of the child if those are the only pads that I have. Now, if I have pediatric pads, they're gonna be a little bit smaller. Depending on the size of the kid, I might still have to place them on the front and on the back. So here's pediatric pads, much smaller. Remember, pads never touch each other. Don't ever allow them to touch each other. One's gonna go on the front, the other one is gonna go on the back. So this monitor that I'm using today is called a LifePak 12. Now, it might not be the exact monitor that you're utilizing at your department or where you work, okay? You might be using a Zoll, you might be using the LifePak 15, you might be utilizing a different piece of equipment. But now when it comes to synchronized cardio version, it's pretty much the same across the board. Now over here on the right side is basically where we're gonna be to utilize our LifePak especially with any kind of defibrillation or any type of jewels for our patient. Now up here on the top where it's gray, we got energy select, charge, and shock. This is where I'm gonna be my defibrillation and I'm gonna be up here for my synchronized cardio version. Down here in the green is where I'm gonna be pacing my patient for bradycardia. First thing that I wanna do is I wanna hit sync, S-Y-N-C. You may have heard this, if you do not press sync when you're in school, it stands for see you next class. Okay, make sure that this button is not only blinking at you, but you also see these little markers. These little markers on your R waves is telling you that this machine is synced to your patient. If you do not press the sync button and you just charge up and shock somebody, you can actually put that patient in V-fib, known as something called an R on T phenomenon, where you actually shock somebody on a T wave. Our patient is on sync. We have our pads on our patient. Uh, as of right now, it's not shocking him until we charge it up. Now, for our wide complex tachycardia, we're gonna be starting at 100 joules. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my energy select and I'm gonna go ahead and press on my energy select. Now I can either toggle using this button or I can go ahead and use this little wheel here at the bottom and go to 100. So I go ahead and select my energy and I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up. Now, while this is charged up, don't just shock. You wanna make sure that nobody is touching your patient. So head clear, feet clear, everyone clear, put my finger over my shock button, and I'm delivering my shock. Now, first thing that we're gonna do is look at our monitor. Once you synchronize CardioVert, the whole goal on this procedure is to try to lower this rate or break this rhythm, we still have 185. Now I'm going to move up, okay? So now depending on your protocols, you can either go to 150 or you're gonna to go to 200, all right? But 200 is going to be the max that you are going to be synchronized cardioverting. So I'm gonna go ahead and energy select again. I'm gonna go up to 200, select, charge, 
Make sure head clear, feet clear, everyone clear. Put my finger over that shock button, look at my patient, and deliver my shock. Now, synchronized cardio version is a pretty easy task to complete, but be mindful. This is not feel good, okay? So if your patient is conscious, make sure you put them under. Now, let's talk about a couple drugs that you could possibly use. One that's pretty popular is Versed out in the field. I'm gonna tell you from experience, if you utilize Versed, depending on your dose, it's not gonna be enough. And it's also not fast acting. Now what I mean by that, you're gonna push the Versed, and if your patient's crashing and you need to synchronize cardiovert them immediately, I've done this, all right? You go ahead and charge it up, you hit shock and your patient screams, ah! Yeah, and you're like, that, now you feel bad. You're like, oh man. We should have gave them more or we should have gave them the verse set earlier. Use a drug like Atomidate. Atomidate is a fast acting drug. After you push Atomidate, if, if you choose the right dose, after you push the Atomidate, your patient is going to go unresponsive and you're gonna have no issues with synchronized cardioversion. Okay, it's a sedative that works quick and it wears off quick. Make sure you sedate your patients before applying jewels. All right guys. Well, I hope this helped. It is a very easy thing to do on these machines. Just make sure you always press that sync button before you shock somebody. We're here to help people, not kill them. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.